so actually there was an error when um, I there was an error when I tried to compare these three different data sets uh, obviously because the group labels were uh, different and could not be compared so we have to go to the annotation again and here we actually labeled uh, the groups according to the treatments but for a meta-analysis uh, uh, these group labels have to be identical so we have to switch from control interleukin 1 alpha to control and treat for example and then we go here to submit and we do uh, the same here for the PDGF sample and here for the combined PDGF uh, interleukin 1. I did that already so I changed it already to control and treat so now all the three groups should have the same uh, the same labeling and uh, let's check the data summary briefly again uh, so here it tells us how many differentially expressed genes uh, had been uh, detected for the different treatments and now we go to proceed takes a while so and now integrity check result is okay so that means uh, that due to the change in the annotation to the same group labels it could do this uh, uh, meta-analysis then I can click the next button and now for the comparison between the different uh, data sets uh, you have to use uh, different types of statistics either combining p-values, effect size or other options so let us try with the Fisher method and the significance level of 0 0.05 and then we go to submit and here actually a very large number of genes had been identified overall to be differentially expressed so when we go here to proceed and now we go to visual exploration and we want to see the chart diagram and except the metadata set uh, we would like to include all the different uh, data sets and now it tells us that it is not possible to display these relationships in a chart diagram so the results contains 2720 genes and just 2000 are allowed so that means we have to focus on more significant genes so we can go uh, back to uh, meta-analysis here on the upper left side and now we uh, try here different other methods so let's try to to reduce the significance level in the Fisher method so when we do that we still uh, come to more than 3000 genes so now we probably try the combining effect sizes and we go here to 0 0.01 the significance level we click submit and now we are actually below the 2000 genes and uh, that means that we have a more stringent selection and with that it should basically be possible to use the draw diagram output so we click here on that we deactivate metadata set and actually the name of the data set tells us now the treatment although within the data set the treatment is always called treat So finally we achieved getting such a chart diagram so you will see here the different treatments smooth muscle cells control versus interleukin 1 when we click on that we will see here on the uh, on the left side the the genes uh, and so we can click on these different data sets to activate them and uh, now we can on the right side limit our analysis for example to control versus we uh, investigate the reactome database and we uh, 
apply that to the gene list smooth muscle cells control versus PDGF treated. So here we see then uh, p value is not so good, so probably there are not so many genes that are altered here. So, and then we look okay when we go for uh, smooth muscle cells control versus treated with uh, both interleukin 1 and PDGF. So we see this pathway significantly enriched. And when we go for interleukin 1 alone, we will see actually just two because um, it is actually a smaller a smaller list of genes that are significant then as compared to uh, an anal analysis of the a single data set alone. Uh, okay, now we can basically look at, at um, we can calculate intersections, unions or differences between the different data sets. So now let's uh, look for intersection. So we check uh, what is common between we have to define a reference data set, what is common between uh, the data set control versus interleukin 1 and the data set control versus interleukin 1 and PDGF. So we click on calculate and here we will see then uh, that this the intersection between these two. And now I can apply the reactome enrichment analysis for the current result list. So can, when we go to that, we see then different uh, pathways and functions enriched. There is also another possibility uh, to we can actually look at individual genes. So when we click here on individual genes, we see them highlighted in the graph, and thereby we can see okay which genes are basically common for smooth muscle cell control interleukin one data set and the data set of uh, control versus interleukin 1 plus PDGF. Another way of analysis is uh, basically when we go to visual mode and instead of draw diagram we go to Venn diagram. Here we again include these three data sets, click on the OK button and here we see just a normal standard Venn graph and we see what are the genes that are common for example for all three of them Basically, that would lead to only to two genes. So only two genes are common to, to all the, the three data sets. And uh, now we can look what is specific for interleukin 1 alone. So that is this list of genes. What is specific for uh, PDGF alone? That would be this gene list. And what is specific for the combination? And this is actually a much longer list apparently because more genes are significantly altered when we have uh, the com combined treatment of these compounds. S so now let's try what the outcome is in terms of enriched functions. So for the combined treatment and react down, when we click on that, we will see here uh, antigen uh, processing, glucose metabolism and so on. And that would actually be something that is specific only for, so that is genes that are not in interleukin 1 alone and not in PDGF1 alone, but only specific for the combined treatment. If we want to see what uh, the overall uh, effect would be, we click here on the whole circle and then we click again submit. And now we would see for instance, cell proliferation and, and, and chemokine receptors and so on.